and welcome back to my channel. My name is Khan and I'm a fourth year optometry student. I took part three about two months ago and I just received my scores and I passed. So I figured this would be the perfect time for me to upload my NBEO part three series. So for one, I used Dr. Andrea's script, which I'm going to leave in the description below. Um, I tweaked it up a little bit based on my likings. I'm more of a visual learner and so I figured I would make a video for you as well so you can watch and follow along as well as looking at the script. So how these videos are going to be structured, I'm just going to talk about the station, um, talk about my experience, some little tips and whatever for you guys. And then I'm going to attach me doing it so you guys can watch it for my audio visual learners out there. Before we get started, I just want to put a disclaimer out there. Um, this is me sharing my experience, not medical advice whatsoever. Um, this is how I did it. And for station one, I had perfect scores on it. So feel free to follow along. You know, I'm sure there are many different ways to do it. You just follow the techniques that fits you the best. So yeah, let's get started. All right, let's talk about station one. Station one is the, the station you really, really, really want to get down because if you look at the rubric, station one has the most points. That means that all these little prelims that you've just been doing and learning for the past few years are really basic and simple. They're worth a lot, so make sure you really get those techniques down. So how station one works, you go in, and you're going to be in the room with the patient alone. There won't be any proctors there. Be sure to check the NBO website. As you can see here, they'll show you the exact room layout for you and all the equipment that they have in the room. And make sure you really go through those. Like some of the near cards that they have is different from what you have in your equipment, really depending on um, what school you go to and what equipment you're given. So make sure you really see what's given to you. While you're practicing, make sure you remember how you're going to lay out all the equipment so that you can go in the right order. And so when you're in there, you don't lose time um, thinking about what you're going to do next and all those things. So make sure you do that. So when you get to the station, you have about five minutes, I believe, to lay out everything that you want. You go in there, make a mental note of all the things you want to put in the order that you want to do your preliminary exams on so that you can just get that done. What I forgot to do was turn on the timer and I forgot this for three station. I just don't know why what happened. I just completely forgot. Um, so just as soon as you go in, make sure to lay out all your equipment and as soon as you hear that thing go off, press the timer button. I know it's so obvious, but in the time i just completely forgot and then i'll be halfway through and i'm just like oh my gosh how much time do i have left um so make sure you click that time button <laughs> um lensometry is also in the station these are extremely easy points so make sure that you know how to read those glasses um read the progressive single vision the a values the b values um, reading the ads these are really easy points that you can get and make sure you learn how to um, check prism as well um, I didn't show it in this video because I didn't have the fake arm or the lensometer in the room that I was filming in. And also I can't really show you, you kind of just have to um, do that yourself. But lensometry is really easy, you don't have to say anything, you just go to the station and then you just start reading. Um, and then for blood pressure, you are treating the arm like a real patient. So you just walk up to the arm and say, hey, you know, um, Say your standardized things, like why you're checking the blood pressure, um, follow the scripts, just make sure you say, you know, I would make sure that there's no loose clothing, um, there's no clothing obstructing the vein, what vein you're doing, um, how you're putting the cuff on, how you're putting the stethoscope on, where you're putting the stethoscope, so just really be detailed. Um, you're talking to an arm at that point, so hopefully that doesn't make you too nervous. Um, just don't forget those little tiny points because they do add up to a lot. And I think one of the things you remember is that if you don't get the diagnosis correct, that is okay. Whatever your diagnosis is, as long as you're able to give two reasons why you think so, you will get partial credits. Hey guys, Editing Con here, and I just realized I forgot something. So don't forget when you're doing um, case history and coming up with the diagnosis to ask a lot of questions that are specific. Um, so I think the patient's only allowed to answer the ex exact question that you ask and they'll not elaborate. So if you ask for pain or something like that, they're going to say yes. And the first thing you're gonna think of is, oh, pain like uveitis or herpes or uh, some type of abrasion and stuff like that. But don't forget to follow up more questions like, is it pain on eye movement? Is it pain worse in the morning? Stuff like that. So don't forget to elaborate on the questions. 
And then patient education, make sure you practice those. Those are kind of difficult, but as long as you're hitting the rubric and answering what are those things and how you treat it, prognosis and all those things, um, you'll be fine. So um, we're gonna start the video and this is exactly what I did. The only two things I forgot to mention, one, cause it was kind of hard to film with my mentee and then my friend filming and then someone just watching us and I kept laughing. So um, I did forget two things in the video, but I put it on the text and then so you can just look at it. Those are the only two things I kind of messed up on. Um, but yeah, hopefully this helped. Good luck guys. All right. Hi, Mrs. Lee. I'm Dr. 726. I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands for about 20 seconds and dry them thoroughly. I'll cut that part out. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and clean all the things that are going to come into contact with your face. All right, Mrs. Lee, I see that you're here for a little bit of pain in your eye. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is it your left eye or your right eye? It's my right eye. And when did it start? Uh, yesterday. Okay, and can you describe the pain to me? Is it sharp? Is it dull? Um, it's sharp sharp pain mm -hmm. and on a scale of one to ten how would you rate it ten being the worst you've ever felt uh, i'd say a five you say a five mm -hmm. okay that's good and then other than like the sharp pain are you experiencing any tearing um any other problems no okay sounds good and then did you ever try to use anything to make it feel better no okay so other than the uh, pain in your eye do you have any other things that you'd like to tell me about today uh, no Okay, good. So I'm just going to ask you a few questions about your ocular health, just to get a good feel of your history. Um, when was your last eye exam? Last year. Last year. And were you diagnosed with any eye conditions at that visit? No. Okay, so no treatments or anything was started last visit? Yeah. Okay. Have you had any infections in the past? No. Okay. Any injuries to your eyes? No. Okay. How about any surgeries? No. So do you wear glasses or contacts? Contacts. Okay. So what kind of contacts do you wear? Uh, dailies. Dailies. Do you throw them out every night? Yes. Do you ever sleep in them? Um, no. Okay, and do you swim in them? No. Okay, so you have really good care with them then? Mm-hmm. All right, good. And then anyone in your family with any history of chronic eye conditions, such as like glaucoma, macular degeneration, blindness, or anything like that? No. Okay, good. And then what do you do for fun? Um, I'm a student. You're a student? Does that require a lot of visual demands? Yes. Okay, and then what do you do for a living? Um, I am a doctor. Okay, and does that require a lot of visual demands? Not really. No. Okay, sounds good. All right, Mrs. Lee, I'm now going to ask you a few questions about your medical history. <laughs> when was your last physical exam? Last year. Last year. Were you diagnosed with any systemic conditions, such as like diabetes or hypertension? Diabetes. Diabetes. How long have you had diabetes for? About five years. Five years. And then are you taking any medications? Yes. What are you taking? Metformin. Okay, and do you know the dosage on that? Yes, 500 milligrams. Okay, and how often do you take it? Twice a day. Good, and do you take it twice a day every day? Yes. Okay, so you're very compliant with it. Yeah. That's good. For your diabetes, do you get regular checkups with your doctor? Yes. Okay, good. All right, Mrs. Lee, um, do you know anyone in your family that has any history of any systemic problems such as hypertension, diabetes, or anything like that? No. Do you smoke, drink, or do any recreational drugs? No. Okay, do you have any allergies? No. Okay, good. So based on my tentative diagnosis, and do you have any questions for me today? Yeah, I was wondering if you could tell me more about what diabetic retinopathy is. Okay, great. All right, do you have any other questions? Uh, not for today. All right, sounds good. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just do some preliminary exams on you. All right, so first, Mrs. Lee, I'm gonna go ahead and check for the alignment of your eye and where it rests. Mm -hmm. So I want you to go ahead and hold this out for me at about 40 centimeters. And you're gonna look right here at that letter A, the 2040 line. And then the whole time, I want you to just look at that A, make sure it's very clear, okay? So now I'm first going to do a unilateral cover test. So this is going to detect if there's any strip business and I'm looking at the eye that's not being covered. And now I'm doing alternating cover test, looking at the eye that's being uncovered and this is going to look for any phoria or the magnitude of the strip business. 
and I see the patient's eyes are moving out, so I would neutralize it with a base out prism that I did not bring today. I'm gonna pretend that's my base out prism. Okay, and I would say that's about a two prism diopter isophoria. Alright, Mrs. Lee, now I'm going to be checking to see how well your eyes can focus up close. So I'm gonna have you look right here at the parrot's beak. So I'm gonna bring this closer to your eyes and you let me know when the parrot's beak break into two and then back as one. Here. Okay, let me know when it's back as one. One. Good. So that's about seven and ten. I'm gonna do that one more time, okay? Is it single? Yes. Okay, let me know when it first double. Double. Mm -hmm. And then back as one. One. Good. So that's going to be seven and nine. Mrs. Lee, that means your ability to look up close is very good. All right, Mrs. Lee, I'm now going to be checking to see how well your eyes move together. So go ahead and follow my light with only your eyes. And let me know if you feel any pain, discomfort, or double vision when that happens. Good, so Mrs. Lee's ocular motilities are full, range of motion, with no over or under actions of muscles. Mrs. Lee, I'm now going to be seeing how well your eyes can fixate on objects going left and right. So we're going to check your horizontal saccades. So I'm going to hold this about 20 centimeters from each other and 40 centimeters away from you. And when I tell you to, go ahead and look at the gold and the silver and the gold and the silver and the gold and the silver and the gold, and the silver, and the gold, and the silver. Good! Mrs. Lee's horizontal saccades, I would say, would be a grade 4 plus. Alright, Mrs. Lee, I'm now going to be checking your side vision. I'm going to sit about 1 meter from you, so I'm going to have you hold this, and then cover your left eye, and then you look right here in my eye, and tell me how many fingers you see. Two. One. Perfect. Two. <laughs> One. Okay, cover your other eye and you're gonna look right here in my eye. Two. One. Perfect. Two. One. Perfect. Good. And Mrs. Lee's um, peripheral vision is full to finger count. So now I'm going to be measuring your pupil size in the light. Go ahead and look at that giant bee at the end of the room. The right eye is about four millimeters in the light of the right eye, and then the left eye is also about four millimeters. Now I'm going to be measuring Mrs. Lee's pupil size in the dark. Ideally, I would have the whole room's lights off, and this is going to be about six millimeters in the right eye, and about six millimeters in the dark. But then you guys can't see the videos. <laughs> All right, so let's just pretend the lights are completely off. All right, Mrs. Lee, I'm now going to be looking at your pupil response and how they react to light. So you go ahead and look at that big B right there. I'm looking at the left eye's direct response, which is a three plus. Look at the right eye's direct response, which is also a three plus. I'm looking at the left eye's consensual response, which is a three plus and I'm looking at the right eye's consensual response, which is also a three plus. And now I'm doing the swinging flashlight test. Good, that means that Mrs. Lee, your pupils are round and equal reactive to light and I did not detect any APD. All right, Mrs. Lee, one more thing. I'm gonna have you hold your hand up about 25 centimeters from your face, your finger. Okay, and is that clear to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I tell you to, you're going to look at your finger and then look at the front. So look at your finger and the front and your finger and the front and your finger and the front. All right, Mrs. Lee, your near response is very good. Um, for your near pupil constriction to your distance pupil dilation is a 4+. plus. When was your last primary care physician? I'm gonna ask you. Your hobby is being a student and your job is being a doctor. Yeah, I started shaking when you laughed. <laughs>
Like, what do I like to do? Be a student? No, I don't. <laughs> That's what I was like, what? <laughs> this is so bad. This is such a bad case history. <laughs>